A very good evening to everyone who is watching uh, tonight's program. Uh, I am Dr. Chong from the Estonian Society of Penang, and with me is CK. CK is Mr. Lim Chun Tian, one of the members of our, our society, and uh, we are going to present our monthly Astro Cafe session. So for tonight, we are going to present the astronomical observatories in Malaysia. So just to let you know, the Estonian Society of Penang is from Penang, which is a small island in the northwestern corner of Malaysia. So to the north of Penang is, is uh, Thailand, to the west is the island of Sumatra in uh, Indonesia, and of course to the south of us is Singapore, all right? So this is uh, the Astro Cafe session. So I present now uh, my presentation. Can you see uh, Michael? Can you see the, the presentation? Yeah, Michael? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so make sure it's now it's on the observation in Malaysia, but to make it more clearer, it's on the optical observation in Malaysia. Because we know there are many countries like Japan, China, around the world, they have all types of observatory. So this is what we are going to present tonight is the optical observatory, where you can see with our naked eye, invisible light. Eh? So those of you are more have more scientific information between 400 nanometer and 750 nanometer. So now I, I, will, I will go straight away to show you. Wait a minute. All right. So here on Google Map, okay, here on Google, Google Map is a, a kind of a location on the observation in Malaysia. So on the left, you see on the on the panel here the name of the observatory, which I will not uh, uh, go in detail. So I'll just scroll through all the observatories in Malaysia. All right, we close this. Okay, we go here on the uh, on the peninsula Malaysia. We start from the north to south, and then later we go to Sabah Sarawak. So here on the island of Langkawi, we have one observatory called Langkawi National Observatory. All right. So this is they have the 20 inch uh, RCOS VC question telescope. The next one here is in Penang, and Penang we have a lot. Penang State we have nine observatory. So we start from the from the top, uh, from the north and south, and then go to the east. So the first one here is our uh, Pusat Palat Sheikh Tahir. All right, Sheikh Tahir as one center. All right. And the next one is, of course, our Lim Chun Kia Observatory. So later on, Chun Kia will, ex will explain his Observatory. All right, very popular thing. And then the next one is here, our Bukit Genting Observatory. It belongs to a Thai restaurant, this Observatory. Then on the eastern part of the island, Georgetown, we have here our, what they call, SMJK Chung Ling Observatory. It's a high school. And then here, big in the, to the east, is our SMJK uh, Heng Yi's Observatory. And here in the center of Georgetown is our tech room observatory called Pixel. All right. So we go down to the, to the mainland. So in Bukit Matajang here, there are some more observatory. Well, one of course is our uh, observatory in our Penang Metropolitan College. All right. And the next one is our uh, S uh, this uh, Beng Tech Primary School Observatory. All right. Then we go down here. I'll just briefly go through all the observatory. Then later on, we'll go to some of the observatories in the chair. We go south, only typing one of the observatory. We go south. Uh oh, you have one here. Okay. Somewhere here in the northern part of Selangor State on the coastal airline, you have our our Selangor observatory belonging to the Javata Multi Selangor. Right? So we go south to where KL, Kuala Lumpur. Here, uh, you have quite a lot here. All right. This one on the left is our observatory in our uh, Tinhua High School observatory in Klang. All right. And somewhere here on the north here, I click here on the left here, it says what? Okay. This is our Shah Gazer observatory. All right. Shah Gazer observatory is right below, belong to, belonging to our Inche Sharin Ahmad. And in KL, we have here also. All right. We have here it is uh, Asham observatory. All right. Asham observatory belongs to the uh, Department of Physics, Faculty of Science, University of Malaysia, Malaysia. All right, University Malaya. 
Okay, the next one is here, also in KL, which is our Plentium Nagara of Duichi. All right, right in the center of KL, KL City. And there's another one here, Ponky of Duichi. Uh, one of the members of the uh, Star Finder Astron Society. All right, he's now the president. That is of Duichi. And then there's some uh, notebook on the map I mentioned later. And here is our of Duichi. It's actually called our Genius. It's no more called Pomata. Genius Center of Duichi, which is located in UKM, UC Kabangsa, Malaysia. And then down here in uh, Negeri Sembilan, you have our SMJK Chongka of Duichi. All right. Then you go down south here, you have our Perukomang of Duichi, which is in Port Dickson, all right, run by the uh, Jawa Muti Negeri Sembilan. All right. And then for the south is our 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 Corusmi of uh, Astronomical Center. It's not only obviously a center, all right? So this one belonging to the Jabata Muti Malacca. Then you go down south here. You see one here, all right? Which is our uh, UTM, UC Technology Malaysia of Duty, all right? So now we go up north in the east coast of, west of Peninsula Malaysia. You see a few here. One here is our uh, Ustisa of Duty Tree, all right? And then it belongs to one of the university in Trenganu. And of course, here in Kelantan, we have uh, two, all right? SMJK Chonghua of Duty Tree, which was just set up recently, all right? CK was there also. And of course, here you have another one, which is our Kota Baru of Duty Tree, belong, belonging to our Dr. Mahalowi, all right? So this is what we have in Peninsula Malaysia. And we now go to Sarah, Sabah. Sorry, there are no objectives uh, that we know of Sarawak, but there's one in Sabah here, right? Here is our Biruni Objectory, right? That's all. So basically here, if you look on, on the on the left-hand side, I count here 26 objectory in Malaysia. But some of them are not indicated here uh, on, this, on this map. So I just add on here. So I will say that actually on this map, in KL, uh, missing here actually, you have one observatory belonging to Mr. William Chin, his observatory in Jelas, mm -hmm. right? And there's another one belonging to Amit, no, no, uh, yeah, William Chin. And then, of course, down there in Negeri Sembilan, another one belonging to Amir, uh, Amir Azim, Hazim, observatory too, right? And then, of course, here, somewhere in Johor, right? In Jemata, Johor, there's another one belonging to Vincent Tan. And of course, near to J. Johor Baru, there's our uh, Rotary Club of Kulai. There's another one. This is not indicated here. All right. And then, of course, here, another one in which is in Sabah, which I showed earlier, one of which is in Sabah. But on the map, not indicated here. So somewhere here, there's another one near Kota Kinabalu called the obviously of the star bar stargazers in the town of Papa. So ended up all together here, we have 31 astronomical observatory. 31, 3 plus up to. So we know that this list may not be complete. So it could be the actual number because there are people coming in and out all the time. We, we are not familiar. So it should, should be more than 31. But on this list, I, I counted 31 astronomical observatory. Okay. So CK, I pass over to you. To explain in detail the first obituary, CK. Okay, uh, can yeah. I'll um thank you very much, Dr. Chong. Uh. Okay, so um as you can see, there are so many observatory. In fact, when we just started the project of uh, looking for observatory, um um we didn't met, we didn't know that there are so many. You know, we know that there, there are many out there. But then when they, we do some more research, then we found out oh I here got this observatory and then got a lot uh you know. Other observatory, and in fact, there are several observatory that um, we both Dr. Chong and I will actually cover. We won't, we won't be able to cover all the observatory, so we will between us, we will cover like 10, 11, or 12 observatory that we think that is uh, actually unique enough. Okay, so maybe you were uh, uh, wondering uh, why this observatory is for. I mean, why you have so many observatory and why observatory set up in the town? Can we observe? Um, observe object. Uh, if you want, if, can you see things from observatory? You know, 
uh, if they are in the town center, like for example, Dr. Chang will cover the pixel of the thing, you know, it's right in the middle of Georgetown itself. So um, what is the reason we set up the observatory there and things like that? So anyway, the observatory, um, before we go on, um, it actually uh, can be a very simple observatory, like the roll-on, roll-off observatory, which I'm going to share more information. Uh, then go up to a very sophisticated dome kind of observatory and the equipment also come from a very basic small telescope to a very large telescope um well observatory is just uh actually it's just a place to store telescope to me you know a basic observatory will consist of telescope uh it will consist of the mount you know to handle the telescope uh then the supporting equipment like computer camera and things like that so um to me observatory is just something for you to keep you know the telescope and use it whenever you need it okay rather than uh, most of us that do not have an observatory will probably have to take the equipment out you know set it up then observe then we keep it back again so this is very very uh time consuming also okay and it's prone to a lot of other things lah. so okay let me jump to let me share a slide with you um okay let me try uh, share my screen okay maybe i share the screen okay i hope you can see my screen right yes can see okay can see my screen right okay so okay observatory can look something like this one this is my observatory like what dr chong say is located at uh pulau betong it's uh, on the north uh southwest side of penang okay so it's quite dark um, but it's not on the hill area it's actually on the ground ground level quite near to the sea and it's a basic observatory uh, i think most of the uh amateur astronomer the observatory will be more or less a roll off roof observatory okay roll off roof observatory meaning the roof will go sideways you know or move move away so that you reveal the sky so this is the very simple observatory uh which is my one is only about 15 by 10 feet so it's 150 square feet right and it was built in 2005 so that was like 15 years ago okay and um okay let's see how it looks like okay this is just a this is an observatory it's not really my uh my design is follow something like this except there's no pillar there's no you see there's a pillar the lake here actually this lake is um i designed this observatory if uh, anybody needs to build an observatory if you need to be uh, you need to have a very uh stable one you probably have a lake here uh so that is actually isolated even from the ground okay um because when we put a telescope inside the observatory we don't want the telescope to shake okay so if you see inside that there's a two pier in the uh observatory where we'll put a telescope on and this pier is actually does not um uh, Join to the structure of the building itself. It's actually go directly to the ground. Okay, um, this one is so that uh, we can isolate all the vibration that's coming from the ground. I mean, from the observatory itself. So we just pile it down to the ground. And if you walk inside the observatory, you are not going to affect the telescope. Okay. So as you can see from here, this is how when the roof is closed and then the roof will go sideways so um different is that you can have a uh, some observatory can have the roof move the whole roof the whole roof move one side to the left or to the right but my one is actually both sides okay because i find that uh both side one is easier to control i can you know i can don't have to open all of it i can open part of it and i can see the sky already then I can move the roof according to how where I want to see the, the sky. Okay. So yeah, this is how it looks like inside actually. Okay. This this is one of the uh officer from I believe it's Jupem, I think Jupem Trangano, I think. 
they came down to look at the observatory and to service the telescope at the time. Mm -hmm. So um, the main equipment that I have here is actually on this side, it's actually a C14 telescope. It's a 14 inch uh, Smith Cassegrain telescope and uh, on an uh, Los Mandy mount. Okay. Then there's another mount on the right hand side here. You can see that it's actually an EQ6 mount. And the telescope, actually I changed, uh, I didn't have a permanent scope here. I usually change between an 8-inch uh, Newtonian telescope or a sharp star telescope, you know, or any other telescope. Okay. Yeah. Anything, Dr. Chong, you want to add on? Uh, I think that's very good. Uh, CK, you continue. Okay. okay, yeah. Okay, so this this is uh, uh, my observatory. Okay, so um, if you have any question, actually you can uh, you can just send a message there and ask any question because uh, we are just we are actually short of time. We have uh, like ten observatory to cover, and you know we only have about one hour. So I move on to the next observatory first before I give pass back to Doctor Chong. Okay, this is um. This observatory is the Heng Yi Observatory, okay? Heng Yi Observatory is actually located in uh, SMJK Heng Yi in Penang itself. And um, I want to talk to you about this observatory because um, this observatory has a, one of the, I would say it's actually the biggest refracting telescope in Malaysia, okay? Which I'm going to cover a little bit later, okay? They have a very nice equipment there, okay? And uh, it was built in 2011. There was like exactly 10 years ago, okay? 10 years ago. And it is located on the top floor of a new building at that time. So it was on the eighth floor. So it's on the rooftop of the eighth floor building. And it's a roll off type. Um, the main observatory is actually 23 feet by 17 feet. So it's considerably much bigger than mine okay much bigger than mine 23 feet by 17 feet and that's exactly the same area 23 feet by 17 feet at the adjacent which they actually use it for class and other activity okay and this is actually how it look like okay this is how it look like the older tree is on the right hand side from the photo is on the right hand side okay that's the older tree with the older tree roof and the activity room is only on the left hand side okay and um okay the equipment is awesome okay very good equipment uh, it's a uh, uh, for you that uh, do not not uh, familiar with telescope uh, most of the time when you see a telescope it's a refracting telescope that means the telescope using a lens type uh, to focus select light and to focus the light. But uh, refracting telescopes are usually small because they are very hard to make. They are very expensive. So for most amateur, they'll have a three inch telescope, you know, four inch, you know, four inch refractor. And maybe some, which is a little bit richer, they may have a five inch refractor or even six inch. But um, the hang is cool. Actually, they have decided they actually they want a nine inch refractor. Okay, nine inch refractor. There are not many uh, nine inch refractor out there in the world. Actually, a nine inch is considerably very big. It's the it's the biggest refracting telescope in Malaysia. Not only in Penang, in Malaysia itself, it's the biggest refracting telescope. Okay, the biggest one and. Uh, it's a very good telescope. The lens is from uh, Russia. Uh, the tube is assembled in uh, Germany and is sent over to Penang and we assembled it back in 2011. Okay. And the mount we use is a para mount. And on top of that, he also have a big six inch uh, solar telescope, which I will show you. Yes, this is the one. Okay. And you see that this photo is a courtesy from uh, Michael, okay? And this, this is the solar telescope itself, the six-inch solar telescope. And this solar telescope um, is a special kind of telescope 
because it's only meant for solar observation and with it you can actually see the prominence on the sun you can see prominence you can see solar flare you know and a lot of other interesting features on the sun and on the left side this is the nine inch refractor okay um this photo doesn't make any justice actually this tube itself is over eight inch long <laughs> okay this is over eight inch long if i can oh, uh, she can eight feet long yeah. eight feet sorry sorry yeah, it's eight feet long yes it is, it is it is very long that's why um that's why we have to build a big observatory remember that the beach is 17 feet so this is um this is already about eight feet long yeah so it's very big okay okay so i think maybe i pass to, to dr chong first for the next observatory yeah, is it yeah. okay with you yeah, thank you uh she can okay. you answer, answer first then i share yeah okay so as usual if you have any question please uh write on the comment side because mm -hmm. we are trying to move very fast to the next observatory yeah CK can can see my first yeah slide. yeah that's good yeah pick so now yeah okay so we have we have uh all together in Penang until today nine of the three so this is the biggest and the best and the latest which was built in 2016. pick so Penang is uh, number nine of the three right so I, I go through it very fast uh, right in the town center next to this place called Komta so in next to this uh Komta there's a public science center uh, so basically it's right here right in the center of georgetown so right in the center of georgetown in in uh, in a busy shopping area is the pixel and it's called run by our as well society of penang there you are take down penang which is a public science center and then from the uh top of this compact tower we look down on this is on the 50th 50 floor we look down you're looking south is the skyline of uh, Penang, Georgetown, and right below there is our observatory. Where is the observatory? Somewhere here. And this round ball, gold ball, it's not a gold ball, it's a huge dome of Tech Dome Penang. So I'll show you this bigger. So there you are, you can see our observatory. All right, it's made of two parts. There's a classroom and the observatory. And there you are, circle by this white loop, huh? Is the observatory. So now the, the observatory was opened in December 2016. All right. And in, in the center was our Minister of Arts, Culture and Tourism, all right? And the uh, CM was also there. So we had an opening ceremony 2016. So our obituary is five years old, just like our society also five years old. So he signed on the on the plaque. That's the plaque of our obituary with our GPS coordinate, all right? So CK is showing the Minister the sun. And this is the, uh, also similar to Heng Yi School. We have a similar rune of the uh, rune telescope also six inch apple all right it's showing the minister the prominence all right so many people were there vip were there all right so the the minister was trying to control the biggest telescope in so which is a 16 inch aperture f8 uh officina stellare telescope and this is uh from italy it's a very good brand all right so he's trying to control it and also there was an exchange between our uh, one of the vip all right uh, of this uh tech dome you exchange the picture taken by ck to the minister all right and behind them is of course the cm all right so i also give some of the picture taken by ca ck to the cm all right and that's a good picture uh, outside the the observatory building so on the left here is the is the observatory telescope building on the right here is the classroom which i'll show you later so now i will take you on a trip to go to to pixel all right so this is a very interesting trip all right so now if you come up of the tech dome a uh, public science center to the level five and just after level five you see this thing which is a model of the chang a tree lunar lander all right so we come here and you click here uh, it's a bit slow uh there you can go there no 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 you are going inside i have to go out again okay so if you go up there you can see the the jet rabbit rover coming up from the lander all right so this is where we actually eat all right and here before you go in you, you see there's a plug here all right now this plug is where the uh lunar lander what and the three rocket inside tech dome donated by the the science museum in beijing donated to tech dome now we go inside here so this is called the Cos cosmos classroom where 
we conduct our classes, our talks, our workshop, a lot of things. And this one of our our general observation telescope, uh, eight inch uh, sky watcher Newtonian on a on a, what you call a, a GE mount. And this is of course the plaque where the minister signed. All right. Uh oh, let me see. Uh, this plaque is where they he signed the name opening ceremony 2016. Let's go inside the observatory. There you are. So this is called Pixel. Welcome to Pixel. So here you have a, a three telescope. The main one is, of course, our six inch F8 Officina Stellari on a Paramount ME2 mount. And here we have our Rune six inch Apple on a EQ6 mount. And here you have our, this is for seeing the prominences, all right, solar prominence. And here is our five inch Acromat on a EQ5 mount. So here a lot of people will come. I'll show you a lot of pictures, a lot of activities we have here. So now we go closer to see the to see the telescope all around there you are ah, and you see the roof as we follow like what ck said we prefer a roll on roll off roof observatory so this is a single roof roll off roll on observatory so now you see here you can go around the telescope and scroll around so this is the back of the telescope so we have done a lot of uh, pictures with this including some research project all right i'll explain to you later so now we move out of this we we'll go back to the powerpoint all right so now you see ck showing our business so before lockdown was implemented in march 2020 last year we have regular visitors to Teglon Penang, and many of them will come up to the observatory so ck myself and some members will show so ck will open up the telescope and the roof and show them a lot of things so now you have uh, that was in commemoration that Pixel is the observatory number nine in penang the most is in observatory in malaysia is in penang so it's Pixel is number nine all right and this is on the 100th day when you open Pixel. Sometime in uh, early uh, 2017, a group of students came from the Scholar Agama and we celebrated the 100th day that Pixel was open and said, people come and look at the big telescope. So CK will show them what you can see the reflection on the mirror, very big, all right? So many people, I will remember Hong Zhuan, it will show them also, by the way, Hong Zhuan now is having his further studies in Japan. Right, so I will ask the, the student to actually look at the mirror. You can see that the, the face is all enlarged. All right, and people are very keen to look at the telescope. All right, and CK is showing them the, the Lune telescope six inch FO, uh, the sun, the prominence. Right, and they will take a group picture with the telescope. Also, outside with the logo of the uh, on the on the left is our society's uh, logo, on the right is Tech Dome, and just outside the objective is where compare the tower. And also be, be in between the tower and us is that the tech dome, geodesic dome. Very nice. At, at night, you can take nice picture here. All right. But now again, a lot of people will come. So we have people from all East Group, all over Malaysia, and from other international visitors will visit tech dome and will go to the observatory. And for our special member, we will also have special observation at night also. On the right hand side is our member William from KL. All right. Mm -hmm. So now I'm saying. So in our hydro, in our our solar telescope to look at the sunspot, we don't use the normal Myla plastic solar field. We use here our Herschel bridge. So basically, you're reflecting the solar image of a very flat prism. Eh? The most of the light is heat is is uh, reflected here very hot, but a small amount of light comes out. So the image of the sunspot, if they are sunspot, very very sharp Herschel bridge, right? So. We also project it on the wall. You can see a sunspot here also, right? And you can catch the sunspot. There you have a sunspot on the hand or the sunspot on your T-shirt. So CK is here showing the visitor. Uh, he took a picture some years ago. The highest resolution moon picture of the sun was taken, of the moon was taken from a uh, picture by CK, all right? So this is showing part of the picture, all right? And they are looking here. This girl is looking at the moon during daytime. With a big, big telescope, all right, be careful. Daytime, don't look at the moon. Uh, don't look at the sun, huh? So you look at the moon, okay? So CK is explaining the visitors of the, the observatory, and I'm showing to them that on the computer uh, monitor here, we have taken a lot of pictures. CK have taken from uh, Tech Dome Pixel and from Penang. So we are showing the 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 kids uh, visiting the observatory the pictures, all right? So CK is showing here uh, the picture that he took of the sun, and look at the detail of the sun spot, all right? So with this, uh, actually, CK, you can, you can do research, you know, publish paper on this, you know, yeah. right? Yeah. And then CK is now showing them uh, a small, this is a small prominence coming up, all right, to the key, all right? So you see a lot of people come. We have workshops, we have talks, all kinds of activity. 
So that was before lockdown, all right? So now, CK is giving a talk inside the, in the classroom next to the observatory, and our members will attend the talk, and other people will come and attend the talk. And then this other member, Yong Nip, who is now studying in Taiwan, is looking at the hydrogen alpha telescope. And then this was a picture taken by CK of the moon, highest resolution moon picture taken in Malaysia. So this is only part of the picture. The whole picture is very big. So this is only part of it, very high resolution. The whole soft, uh, what do you call, uh, 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 what they call picture is about 200 megapixels, all right? So CK is showing to them the visitors, this Marcelli family, the Saturn taken by him from Penang, all right? And our member, Mohammed Dain, is also doing the picture tour, explaining to the public, all right? That he is showing people the total lunar eclipse taken from Penang, all right? And our member, David. So basically, our society member, as well as Society of Penang, ASD, has a lot of members who are very keen very good in learning, do, doing uh, what they call hands-on activities in astronomy. And this another group uh, who have seen uh, our observatory taking a picture of the moon picture, all right? And this is an international school, right? Uplands International School who came to visit, all right? And see, this uh, little girl is observing the sunspot, all right? With the international school. And then there you are, uh, uh, I call it a three in one. The telescope is there. You are there in the picture and the compta, the reflection of the compta power on the mirror. Three in one uh, picture, very nice. All right. And so, so you have this picture where we explain what is the sun. Now people ask all kinds of questions about the sun and we explain to them. All right. And we have a lot of workshop, a lot of adjectives. So, Dan here is giving a workshop as for me came to the young people of Penang. All right. How to use the star chart. And this, this family here is using a, a star chart umbrella. Very nice, good picture. All right. And then CK is explaining to them during the daytime, during the astronomy camp, about the observatory. And daytime, we show them how to take the picture of the sun. And a lot of workshop activity here, they are making a, a model of the sun, the, the earth, all right, and the moon, all right. Okay, so that's the more the, the workshop. There are a lot of workshops in that, in that astronomy camp. Our member Lai is explaining, uh, giving a talk, all right. And this is a good picture of the astronomy camp. So a lot of activities. So. People of Penang are quite aware of our activities, all right? This is another group. Uh, this is the same group now outside the, the observatory. And then nighttime during the astronomy camp, we open to the to the members, the, the participants, to see the, the, the sky at night. So this is a main telescope, all right? All right? Dime is taking some picture for someone with their handphone, all right? Uh, long live this way. No, 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 it's not observatory. They show the activities as well. So this, that's it. Okay. No, so now, no, that, as I said, the first one, the picture is the most, after this is less. So this one is even research. So Mohammed Dime is using the telescope to do a master's project on the, on the, what they call lunar occultation of the stars. All right. So this is it. Group picture. All right. So a lot of pictures. So now we go to the next one. Uh, so CK, maybe you go to your next your next opportunity, CK. Oh, okay, sure. I'll do that. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Chong. Um, actually, uh, we have quite a number of people coming in to join. I can see that Robin Lee just joined us. Uh, Ridwan also joined us and Chong Singh and also one from Triple Impact, right? Take uh, Miss Ong, right? I think. Yeah. Yeah, Miss Ong. Okay. But I Chong Singh got questions, but um, if you have any questions, yeah, do write on the comment section. And uh, we'll answer it just before we end the program, okay? Uh, because we are trying to cover uh, more observatory uh, as fast as possible. So let me go to the um, my next observatory, which I think uh, worth sharing, okay? Let me try that, okay. Can you see that, okay? Uh, let, let me try to put full screen, yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> How to use full screen? Uh, I'm new to this one. Let me check uh, how to uh, use. Okay, uh, but never I go move fast, fast so again. Okay, sorry, I suppose to. Sorry, uh, CK, I can see well. Just continue. Uh, yeah, no, uh, because there's a side there. Uh, never mind. I, I hope you don't mind because I'm trying to do full screen. This this one new to me. I I uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, never mind. Uh, story, uh. Okay. Anyway, the next uh topic I want to show you is actually the uh, William Chin Observatory. Okay, William Chin is a graduate from University of Malaya, okay, physics student. And he actually built the road off roof observatory at his uh, parents' house. Okay. 
But uh, I recently heard from him that uh, since the parent is moving out, so he's actually dismantling the observatory and uh, moving to other part of KL or other place which he has not uh, decided yet. Okay. But this is, uh, you are built about one year after mine was built in, in 2006. Okay. So as I said, it's a really stop operation. And um, yeah, okay. Maybe, uh, yeah, if you can see that, it's a quite a small of the tree like mine and uh, it's a roll off roof and it has a it don't have a pier but it actually has the whole mount set up on the observatory itself and actually from this observatory he actually took a lot of uh i believe he took a lot of uh planetary images and deep sky images from here so okay and um it is terrace i believe it's terrace right uh right it's in terrace itself so you can say there is a middle of the city. So even in the middle of the city, you can actually do quite a lot of uh, observation, quite a lot of uh, imaging from there itself. So um, he did that. So um, it's, um, it's uh, how to say, uh, it's not a very big one, but it's actually he did a lot of good, uh, took a lot of nice images and uh, and uh, do a lot, I think, uh, data gathering from there also. So this one, I'm, the next observatory, I'm not going to cover very fast, but I, I chanced upon this observatory when I was searching for, uh, searching for, you know, uh, information of observatory. And this is one of the uh, amateur astronomer in KL itself, in Subang Jaya. So uh, it's a, again, it's a roll off, roll on, roof observatory and most of the time um, when people want to build such observatory they are actually thinking of building it just on top of their you know second floor house you see so this is a very simple one and i, I believe this kind of observatory it doesn't cost a lot maybe about ten thousand ringgit or something like that okay so he has a mid telescope there i believe and a coronado solar telescope and some sky water telescope okay so I move on to another observatory before I pass back to Dr. Chong. This one is, uh, I will include this observatory in because this observatory is quite old already. Uh, it's in 2000. There's not much uh, information that I can get from this observatory. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you also are not aware of this observatory, but it was, apparently it was built in 2000. Okay. And it was uh, by Mr. Wei Kao Yang. I think Dr. Chong mentioned about him. Okay. He actually got a master degree in astronomy. I believe he's from a Swinburne University, I think, online course. And uh, inside it, they actually have a 12 inch mid telescope. Okay. And I was, I, I read that it was, it cost about 100,000 ringgit, which actually they raised from selling uh, souvenirs. Okay, I think they come up with uh, you know some kind of astronomical uh, souvenir, something like a sundial, uh, things like that. So they sold it and they they managed to raise about one hundred thousand, which they have. They built this observatory. Okay, but this observatory is actually um, the dome itself is about two meter, two and a half meter or three meter dome. I think very small dome, but it actually brought in from uh, Australia is from a Cyrus dome. Okay. And I can show you that yeah, this is from the outside how it look like. Okay, it's in Kulai itself. I passed by Kulai, but I didn't. I was not aware that there's an observatory there. So Kulai is actually close to UTM itself. Okay, UTM is in uh, uh, Skudai. So Kulai, I believe, uh, maybe ten kilometer, fifteen kilometer away. Okay, so it's quite near there. And uh, inside it, yeah. So this is the telescope and the the dome itself inside how it look like. Okay. So, okay, I think I'll pass back to Dr. Chong also because uh, I, I have a few other observatory which I'm going to cover, but I'll, I'll let him cover his first. Yeah. Okay, so, Dr. Chong? Chiki, any... I'll, I'll present the next two observatory on my side. Yeah, do you have any question on the earlier one? Yeah. Okay, never mind, yeah. So, CK can see, eh? Yes, yes. Okay. So, this is our Pusa Palace Sheikh Tahir, Sheikh Tahir Astronomical Center in Penang. Yeah, this is in a sense the oldest uh, astronomical observatory for the Javata Mufti. All right, so this is on the western coast of Penang, not western coast. All right, and that that's it. All right, it's up on the shield there. The observatory is over there. 
All right, a bit of history. So it's not only you are showing equipment, a bit of the history. So this is very important. So the Pusat Fala Sheta here, the first opportunity built by Jabatan, any Jabatan Mukti in Malaysia. So by our Sheikh Muhammad Tahir Jalaluddin, uh, one of the Toko astronomy in Malaysia, all right, but he was based in Penang. And this is what, so this one CK is the same. This is a serious dome, all right. And inside you have the same thing, a mean LX200 uh, 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 plastic also, similar to the one in Kulai. But I think this opportunity in Pusat Kuala Sheikh Tahir was earlier than that, slightly earlier than the one in Kulai. So this is the telescope inside there. And then here is a Pegawai Ichi Fielda using it. So basically they don't use, use it too much for, for research movement, for uh, what they call new moon sighting, plus a bit of research they do, all right? So this is the, the, the it's actually, it's a, a kind of a house there. A lot of uh, offices inside there, this is the, the telescope. So looking west for the new moon, okay? So they will be looking for the new moon sighting. And this is the, the person in charge of the city, in charge Zulhelmi of Jamta Muti Plotinan. All right, so they're looking, so they're still using theodolite to look for the new moon, theodolite. They're looking at the west, just across in opposite us of it is Sumatra. All right, observing new moon. So this is the latest one to look for the, the, the recent beginning of Bulan Ramadan. All right, so this is Dato Mufti making the announcement of the new moon sighting and our Dr. Abdul Halim. He just retired from USM, an astronomy lecturer from USM. Just, I was also the astronomy lecturer from USM before I retired. So this is the telescope inside, uh, LX200, 12 inch, uh, all right, uh, uh, mid telescope classic, all right? So this is a lot of business, a lot of business to this operation, including members of the public and people from all background also, all right? So we even have this astronomy Olympiad training, I was training some five students, we went to the Olympiad, International Oly uh, Astronomy Olympiad in Romania in 2019, all right? This is the exam uh, at the end of the training, all right? A lot of research to this operation. And they have a gallery also inside there. A lot of pictures in the gallery, all right? A lot of visitors, right? People from all ages. Ah, uh, look at the kids. They love it when they go inside the dome, all right? So this is also from all background. People can visit. So Jabatan Muti, uh, uh, is very active in promoting astronomy outreach. So I'm giving a talk to a group of uh, scholar agama students, all right? And nice targeting on the road. Very nice, all right? Very nice. And this is our what we call this analemma experiment. Idea from Mr. Uh, Mr. Lim, Chung Kya's father. All right, uh, they were observing the shadow of the of the sun on the floor. All right. So the next one is LNO Langkawi National Observatory. So this is one of the best observatory in Malaysia. Somewhere this in, in uh, Langkawi Island, Kuala Town, about twenty minute drive. You have uh, the Bukit Malut Reservoir, Bukit Malut Dam, and there you have this observatory, uh, National uh, Langkawi National Observatory on top. All right. And very nice view. You have a lake there and all surrounded by jungle. Very nice environment. All right. So this is the main telescope. So you have here the main telescope, which is, which is RCOS 20 inch speed cache grain F8.1. All right. F8.1. And it's a dome of the Very nice. And they do quite a lot of research there and they have conferences, seminars, and so on. So this is the telescope. All right. I've got the telescope being for research. They put CCD camera all the time. You don't have a chance to touch it. So you can see the size of it. When Dr. Sheikh Muzaffa uh, visited the observatory, you see how big is the telescope. It's quite big, eh? all right? So at night, very nice view. And in this observatory, I like, I like it. A lot of nice facility. All right? This is a business gallery, the top, all right? so, and they have a lounge. It's like a kind of a hotel also. We've got a lounge, a TV, and so on. The lounge there, all right? Like hotel room. And kitchen, you can prepare your own food there. All right, and this is some seminar going on. And this this main main one is not a main, this dome is not a main observatory. This is a solar observatory. The two two dome, one for the stellar telescope, the big one, twenty inch, our COS, and also the solar dome. All right, so there you are. This is the solar dome, and they do a lot of research on the sun. It's easier to do research on the sun because the sun is visible practically every day. All right, look at the telescope they have for the sun. All kinds of telescope. All right, all right. Very, very nice. Look at it. They have hydrogen uh, alpha. They have also calcium K, which is in ultraviolet, in normal, uh, let's say, uh, myla film. So they, they observe the sun in all wavelengths. And you can see on the website, you can go to the website where every month of the of the year, they have many data. They have collected the sun in all the wavelengths. All right. And then this is the, 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 the office just below the solar observatory that they record. So the researcher here is looking at the sun in 
uh, calcium K, right? UV light, right? So they also have a weather station there, for sky camera, right? And this is after one of the one of the the, the workshop. Then always in the group picture, you see where William William is always there, all right? Okay. So now we go to the next one. Uh, we have this Chongling High School Observatory. So this school was very active in astronomy in, in Penang. So this is somewhere here. It's somewhere in uh, in the near to uh, Penang Hill, but on the ground level, Heng Yi High School, uh, no, Chongling High School Observatory. So there you are. It's on top of the second floor of the of the of the building here. Okay. This is now just now was looking to the south. This is looking to the west, right? And this is the observatory. Well, it was completed in 2004. No, no. 2005 open ceremony 2005 we were there so this was it so the the club was very active it was formed in 1998 with the help of the usm astronomy club all right and then in 2005 they successfully built the first school observatory in malaysia in modern times all right so this is the the the, the teacher in the center is the tan Nui Yo, in charge of the club introducing some visitors to the to the to the observatory and here you have the selection 11 -E. CGE 11, all right? And this is uh, on the GE mount. So this telescope was donated to one of the Chongling old boys who was a lecturer in one of the colleges in New York City. We know that Chongling uh, alumni are very loyal to Chongling. They will give a lot of donations to the Chongling school. So it's donated by one of the Chongling alumni from America, CGE 11 inch on the GE mount. But of course the dome, of course, is manually open, all right? By the students here with the cable, magnetic cable. So the student is showing the visitors how they take the picture, okay? How they take a picture with the uh, automatic controller and they could take and process the picture of Jupiter with one of the shadow transit. And our member Kenny is there, all right? The, the, the club president of Chongling. So this 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 uh, school astronomy club is very, 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 uh, what they call active, all right? Because of lockdown, they cannot go back to observatory. But before lockdown, they were very active, all right? A lot of activities. And to go up, you need to go up, go up, flight of stairs, all right? So there you are, just on the rooftop. This is, and this observatory is right in the center of a residential area, all surrounded by buildings, by apartments, right? There you are, all right? The, so outside the observatory, you can also have a lot of area to observe, all right? So there you are, many people come, right? So giving talk. Now, I find that the astronomy club members of this school are very keen. They will, they don't have a classroom to give talk on the, on the floor, on the staircase, they will sit down. To, to, to do the activities. So this, this uh, astronomy club in Chongming School is very, very active, all right? And the teacher here, Mr. Uh, Tan, uh, Puan Tan Nui Yu, just retired, is very, very proactive to promote astronomy in Chongming, all right? So the students here are very keen. They actually have regular stargazing before lockdown in Chongming every Saturday night. And they, the senior students will train the students from Form 1 on that. So from Form 1, Form 2, up to Form 6, they will train them, all right? Very, very active. Right? So this is one of the events, eh? So now I be, uh, we go back to, to CK. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Let me let me share my screen again. Okay. Uh, screen. Good, huh? Okay. Let me try that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Chong. So, yeah. Um... I have another three more of the three. I'm going to cover another two before I pass to Dr. Chong. Okay, can you see my screen, right? Okay. This of the three is actually in Limbang. I don't know if anyone uh, aware of this of the three. In fact, I am, I am not aware of this of the three until the uh, Fong King Jing, the president of the uh, Star Finder uh, Astronomical Society, uh, let me know about this. And this one is his uh, fellow classmate, Mr. Wong Se Kim. Okay, he's in Sarawak. Limbang is in Sarawak, border town to uh, Brunei. And um, he actually built an 11 inch uh, observatory dome. Okay, if you, if you have seen the observatory that Dr. Chong talked about, you know, and I talked about, actually, the dome are actually. Uh, bought in you know from australia from somewhere in europe or whatever they bought in and they assembled here but mr wong he actually built himself the observatory okay he built it and it was actually quite a long time ago um he couldn't give me an exact date uh okay he couldn't give me an exact date 
but he told me it was in the late 80s itself okay late 80s itself and uh if it's late 80s itself it means that it is one of the oldest um amateur uh, observatory where there's a roll off roof is a dome roof um it is actually the oldest i think i don't know whether there's anything older than that okay and it's at 11 feet and he has a many telescope inside which i will show you later okay uh okay this is how his observatory look like okay from a glance i look at it, it could probably look like this up to the two from star wars okay but he, he built it a long time ago and he he i was told that he actually built the whole thing itself everything from the ground up he built himself and not only that he actually built himself the observatory but even the uh telescope itself okay if you see the red telescope right here this is actually a home built telescope okay it's a home built telescope and can if you can remember that this is back in the 80s itself okay in the 80s itself uh there's no internet uh, there's not a lot of book in the library that you can find and so this thing he actually got learned all by himself and actually he bought the mirror from uh he was i was told that he bought it from mr louis one of the telescope dealer in kl itself and it's a 17.5 inch colter mirror itself primary mirror and this is 17 not 17 it's a 17.5 inch okay so this is if it is correct, then this is actually the biggest amateur uh, homemade telescope in Malaysia itself. Even it's homemade or it's a bought one, I think this is the biggest. I have not seen anything bigger. Okay, if you have seen anything bigger than that, maybe you put in the comment, you know. But uh, I think this is the biggest. And um, on top of that, he actually got other telescope itself. Okay, I I seen that. Uh, he shared with me some of the, I talked to him, I called him, then he, he shared some photos, which I didn't put here, but he got a lot of other smaller telescopes, which I'm not going to mention, but the most impressive that I can see here is the 17.5 inch homemade telescope. Okay, that's big. Okay, and this is actually Funky Observatory, the next one. Okay, he's the one that recommended me to this Mr. Wong. And Mr. Fong is now the president of the Starfinder Astronomy maker society and he lived right in kl itself okay uh, he got an observatory okay and this this one is a he, he bought in the dome and he he actually assembled the dome by himself okay he bought in the material but he assembled it uh, in 2010 itself okay 2010 and uh it is right in kl itself we it say it's in the uh, uh five kilometer from the kl city center and um uh, is um in inside is an eight inch RC scope. I'm going to talk to later, which I show you. Okay, ah, uh, this is how how it look like. Okay, this is the photo that he actually sent to me, a bird's eye view of his observatory, and you can see that wow, that's a I think that's a quite a nice neighborhood there, right? A huge bungalow and things like that, very good neighborhood, and it's uh look quite high up also. And uh, he built a special, I think, rooftop of it, and he put the dome up there. Okay, he put a dome up there, and on top of the dome, he actually has a weather system also, a weather station there. Okay, there's a scope on the right, uh, on the left hand side. This is an eight inch uh, RC scope from GSO, I believe, and he put it on the CEM seventy by Optron. This is it's a huge mount okay and um yeah other than that um yeah so he actually has a weather station which i think i did i missed put here but he has a weather station and also an all sky camera which is detect all the uh uh like the william chin observatory if i can if you can remember i talked earlier they actually has this uh weather uh this uh all sky camera this all sky camera is actually a a camera with a fish eye lens and it actually take images of the whole sky from time to time. And this way you can actually observe the cloud, whether the sky is clear or not, or whether it's full of cloud. So you know when to observe and things like that. Okay. So yeah, I got another one of the three, but I think I pass it back to Dr. Chong first. 
um, before I move on to the last of the three. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, CK. I will present here my last, my for me lah, the fifth of the three. But we didn't have time to go through all. Maybe one day yeah. we have another session where we ex explain more of the three. All right. Right. Okay, so now the name is changed. No more Pramata. Huh? It's called our Pusa Genius at Pinta Observatory. All right. So this is actually uh, in uh, what you call here near uh, uh, what you call uh, Kajang, which is in UKM, New Zealand, Kebangsaan, Malaysia. All right. It's not called Genius at Pinta. So this is a center where they train the gifted children uh, all over Malaysia who go there for intensive training. And then they also have an observatory there. Then you are somewhere in the center, you will have here. All right. So this observatory is part of the training of the student, all right? And they also have uh, some of the, the students uh, in UKM doing their master's PhD, uh, uh, what they call observatory there. I've been to this observatory before, quite impressive. All right, there you are. This whole complex of the of this uh, genius at Pinta, where you have this observatory, and you have a view of this telescope. So basically, I observed that they do basically a lot of studies on the sky pollution, uh, what they call the sky glow around the KL area and also the cloud cover. That's what it is. And this student here, Afik, has uh, got uh, do some research on this. Uh. So this is uh, what I know here. Okay, CK, I'll pass back to you. Oh, okay. So fast. <laughs> so fast. Okay. Let, let I only have one, one more observatory to cover. Yeah. Okay, maybe. Let, Good, also, let, me, you let, let me, me let me go and find back my. <laughs> Okay, they thing, huh? they yeah, yeah, we still got a question to answer. Also, I yeah. think Chong Seng did ask, uh, did ask a question. Okay, so okay, let me do the sharing now. Um, okay, okay, you can see my screen, right? Okay, this is the last of the three I have, and this one is um. Um, I wanted to share this observatory because it's, uh, it belonged to an amateur, okay, Dr. Maharovi. He is actually a doctor in the uh, um, University of Science Malaysia in Kota Baru, I believe, right? So, yeah, he's a doctor himself. And as an amateur, he actually got a lot of equipment. It's a very impressive array of equipment. I think it's the most... Uh, I think how to say, uh, the most well equipped for an amateur, which I'm going to share with you later. But anyway, um, in 2017, he actually got a grant to set up a nice building under the Mosti project. Okay, so the Mosti project, they actually uh, give him some funding to build a proper uh, facility to house his uh, equipment. Okay, and it's, it's in a... Uh, in near to Kota Baru, not really exactly in Kota Baru, but just often a little bit from Kota Baru itself. Um, so it's, a, it's quite big, 65 feet by 80 feet, okay? Um, but it has a few, uh, I would say there are a few sections, uh, it's not the whole, the whole 65 by 80 feet, the whole thing is an observatory, but then it's separated into the observatory, the observatory deck, gallery, uh, toilet and things like that. Okay, so um, this is how it look like. Okay, this is how it look like. Uh, the equipment is actually inside here. Okay, equipment I believe is inside here. I think there's a room here and the roof is actually sliding in or out. I cannot remember. Yeah, I think sliding in or something like that. Or I may be mistaken. I think the maybe the, the, oh, the thing will be here then it slide out like that. So either way, I think one of it is sliding in or out. Okay, so one of part of it is actually the observatory itself, which I'm going to show you more photo inside. Okay, and the equipment is actually very impressive. Okay, equipment is actually very impressive. Um, you can see that there's only one line each of this scope and mount, scope and mount, scope and mount, right? But if you just say like this scope and mount, uh, it will cost you like maybe 100,000. Another scope and mount, another 50,000. Scope and mount another 50,000. <laughs> so it's such a quite uh, impressive uh, array of equipment, okay? It, it is only uh, something that we can dream of, but he's a very uh, good, you know, he's, uh, he's a doctor. Uh, of course, he can afford it, but he has a very good knowledge of astronomy. And actually, he being an amateur there and now with the facility, he actually shared 
a lot of the astronomy knowledge to a lot of school in Kelantan itself. So he has got a lot of visit from schools, from U, uh, UST and things like that. Okay. So um, I'll show you. Yeah, this is how it look like. Yeah, I think correct. Just now I said correct. So the observatory itself, the one on the left hand side of the photo, which I show you. So the roof must be moving into another roof under the or, uh, the other uh, main roof. Okay. So you can see that these are all his telescope, um, the observatory itself under one roof, okay? And they got like at least five permanently mounted pier on the observatory itself. And um, any of this one is actually, any of this scope itself, by itself, is actually a very, very, very good scope, okay? Very, very good scope, okay? So yeah, so um, I think that's all for my presentation. We have a lot of other observatory, but we I selected this few because they are very unique. Um, maybe we can have another session um, that Dr. Chong and I uh, will share more observatory in detail, okay, in detail. So yeah, anything you want to add on Dr. Chong? I think we have a question or so from other people. I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just wrap up all the observatory, yeah? Yes, right? yes, okay. So just now, uh, at the end of my presentation, I said there are 31, 31 observations in Malaysia. Now, CK has introduced two that I'm not aware of. So somewhere in KL is our Sarin Saleh. Lah. All right, that's 32. Yeah. And Wong Sen Kim in Bimbang in Sarawak over here to the east, somewhere here, 33. So we have 33 astronaut observations. The, we may have missed out some, right? So just to, to, to just to to be uh, more complete, huh? this is the largest telescope or observatory in Malaysia. We have to make clear. They're very near to each other. Total coconut observatory for this one has a 24-inch split cache grain telescope. It's a reflector. And next to it, our R Gorosmi observatory in Malacca also has a 24-inch split cache grain telescope, 24 inch. The next one, which is smaller, of course, is our Langkawi National Observatory, Bukit Malod, all right, which is uh, 20 inch, all right. That's about all. So now uh, I just want to check. Huh? I understand that Robin is watching the program now. Robin, do you know that in uh, in uh, this uh, Johor, there are already a few observatory, you know, your what do you call uh, 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 Kulai Rotary Club, UTM, and our Vincent Tan Observatory in Jemanta. So, Robin, when are you going to set up the objective in Kluang? Right in the center. <laughs> all right, we are waiting for your objective. All right? I think that's about all for me. For me, uh, CK. Any question, huh, CK? Uh, I don't have any question, but uh, one of the viewers, I think I remember, uh, Mr. Ng Chong Singh, okay? Yeah. Uh, he actually asked, uh, what, which one is the oldest of the three in Malaysia? Do you know any chance with the oldest of the three? I am not uh, very exactly, uh, I want to call sure of the dates. Lah. I think was it in the 1980s, our Mr. Chow Chu Kian, the Astro Society of Malaysia president from KL came to Penang Law. I just knew him long. He told me that there is a, 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 a observatory in Kampa. And it seems it was established, could be during the colonial times, lah, before wow. 1967. But wow. later, that observatory was top, right? It was in Kampa. Lah. Kampa, right? Uh -huh. So oh, over over the years, we have a lot of reports that a lot of activities in Malaysia many years ago. For example, in the 1990s in USM, a group of Saint Xavier Institution secondary school students from Penang came to see me in USM, brought for me a 10 inch a mirror to be coated. All right, they said there was a teacher, uh, Mr. Santok Singh, the, the the teacher in Saint Xavier, during the I think the 1950s, uh, they have a club, a study club, and they homemade the telescope. But now they mm -hmm. want to find a way to record it. So I find that I put it in my coating unit in school of PC. Uh -huh. The mirror is too big to go inside, so I cannot code. Uh -huh. So even so here and there, many, many people. Of course, the other one we know, I, I forgot what's your name. There was uh, some of the British uh, what call astronomer. They come during the colonial time, maybe in the 19th century, where Penang Hill. And they brought a telescope from UK to observe from Penang Hill, all right? But they didn't set up observatory. So in a sense, astronomical activities in Malaysia started many years. But that's why when I say, okay, there are these observatory 
Chongling was built in uh, 2005, the first school observatory in modern times. Modern times. Actually, earlier, already got observatory, but this is in modern times. Yeah. But I think last time got, uh, I think our Pusa Fala is when was it 1989 or so, right? Uh, was it there? Pusa Fala, the foundation stone was laid in 1988. 88, yeah, it's quite long then, also, right? Officially, it was established, Pusa Fala, in 1991. Right, so ah, it yes. was, yeah. it's also 30 years already, that ah, one, so, right? So in, in a sense of uh, Balai Chirap Jabata Mufti, uh, Pusa Fala Sheikh Tahir in Penang was the oldest, uh, Jabata yeah. Mufti. Yeah, oh, yeah. What, what about the one in Frangano, the Pusa one? Now, Pusa one, I then in the, I think in the late 1990s. 90s. It was, it was quite, quite early, la, but how early, I don't know. La, huh? But that's yeah. what that old. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Tewan, uh, what about that? Uh? I cannot remember uh, Mr. Tewan. Mr. Tewan, so. um, if I'm correct, Mr. Tewan's obduity is obduity number two in Penang. Right? First one is... Uh, 1991, Pusa Fala officially established in Pantai Aceh. I think Mr. Tewan, Mr. Tewan of Bunti was set up about the same time as Baksa. Uh, Baksa was set up in about 1995. I think Mr. Tewan was around there also, 1995 in Penang. In okay. Penang. So yeah. Mr. Tewan is very, very old also, in modern time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I think... Um, Chong Seng also got another question I just saw on it. He said, what is the minimum cost to build a simple home observatory? Ah, she okay. can answer that. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I think it's still very cheap. Let's say um, a lot of amateur actually, they build it. You know, they, they, they have their a two-story house, you know, maybe a terrace or something like that. So um, you, can, you, can, you can build the observatory inside the house itself. I mean, um, Maybe you make part of the roof to be able to open. Uh, so there's a cheap part. Uh, some of them, they just build a separate, you know, or maybe on the extend the, the, the building of the second floor, they extend a little bit out, then they build a small like, condo for the other three. I think that one will probably cost about um, 10,000, 15,000. I'm not sure about the price now. Um, the original of the tree, which I built, you know, in 2005, that was on the ground level. It only cost less than 10,000. Okay, yeah. complete everything. But then, uh, since you build it on the second floor, it may cost a little bit more, but I don't think it's a lot more, maybe 10,000, 20,000, I would think. Yeah, so it depends on what's the size or so. Um, the cheapest will be a roll off roof of the tree. And the one that the Funky uh, bought and assembled one, that will be a little bit costly. It can start like, uh, his, he, he bought in, he told me it was something like 3,000 euro or something like that, which is quite cheap. But then by the time you have the shipping and tax and things like that, and you assemble, you assemble it, it will probably cost you like 30,000 maybe or more, you know, for a small dome of the tree, okay? So it depends. If you want to build a cheap one, yeah, go for the roll-off roof. So it's quite cheap, reasonable, relatively cheap, like I would say. Okay. So yeah, well, thank. Yeah, sorry. Did you give me an? Uh, I will give a reminder to Chong Sing. Ah, uh. Chong Sing, <laughs> better work hard. We yeah. have another two Penang secondary schools and another <laughs> organization express interest to build their obituary in Penang. Yeah. So now we have we have nine offices in Penang. Number nine is Tech Dome, la, Pixel. So if you want to get the off number 10, la, you better work fast, you know. Yeah. So if you want to work, you better work fast because another two Penang secondary schools and one organization express interest. So we may break the number 10 barrier soon. So why not oh. do your auditory? So your auditory in Penang, Chongqing will be auditory number 10 in Penang. The others will come after you, right? So then it's a nice number, so you better work fast, don't see? Okay. And I think uh Yong Lip, uh, remember, right? Chong Lip, yeah. our friend in Taiwan now. <laughs> so he actually asked a question. He said, is there any future to build uh, more observatory? I think in the whole Malaysia, right? Uh, he said, any plan to build observatory in future? Yeah. Of course, as I said, in Penang, another three, uh, two schools and one organization. So basically, uh, it, it, I, I, I don't say that in, uh, in Malaysia, the, the observations are sprouting up like mushroom after the rain. La. No, no, no. Slowly, it will be increased. La. But you see, uh. in Malaysia, I think 
most of the individual astronomy are are built by people by themselves with their own pocket money. So we hope the authority can sponsor the school to build. For example, uh, our astronomy society in Penang has been on a campaign many years to promote astronomy in Penang schools. Huh? And now we have been promoting for since 2005 huh, to do uh, Bali Pulau as the astronomy town of Malaysia. So we hope Bali Pulau can get this, this uh, what we call uh, designation. Huh? Then we promote even more astronomy in Bali Pulau. Bali Pulau as the first astronomy town of Malaysia and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have another question from uh, Mr. Tan Hong Wai. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's actually asking how is the humidity issue being taken care of in the roll on, roll off roof observatory, yeah. especially where the telescope is permanently mounted in there? It's a okay. good question, CK. I'm sure yeah. you, can, you can answer that, CK. I, <laughs> I try to answer. Okay. Actually, in the roll on roof, Roll on, roll off. Uh, it's actually is a it's a it's more like open style observatory. It's actually there's a very uh, highly ventilated. You know, there's this uh the wind is uh can move in. You know, uh below the roof and going up. So it's actually ventilated. So humidity issue. What he meant is actually if the if there's a high humidity, then our telescope may get fungus. You know, after a while, uh, you get uh, humid, then later you get fungus. How do we prevent this and things like that? Mm -hmm. So um, one thing you have to understand that if you, for the fungus to grow on the telescope, uh, actually it needs a few uh, few criteria. One is that it, that place will be dark and damp, you know, like in the closet, you know, in your work uh, clothing closet. Um, then another thing is that the air is not uh, ventilated. Okay, one is dark and damp, then it's not ventilated. If it's ventilated, you are quite um, quite safe. Okay, not to say totally safe, it's quite safe. Although it's humid, but if it's ventilated, it's actually quite good. You know, because the air, you may get wet, then you'll get dry again and things like that. So what you do that, uh, if you have this, if you have a telescope, you store your telescope, even you don't have an observatory or even you put in your uh, room itself, um, don't put the telescope somewhere like a storeroom or things like that, you know. You can just leave it at the side where it's well lighted up, uh, away, of course, away from the sunlight. Uh, ventilated and dry is good enough. Um, as long as you don't put inside the closet, <laughs> okay. Uh, a lot of time, uh, I see that people got a telescope, they, they put in the observatory or so, or put in the house or so. Um, they don't use it and they just leave it somewhere and they just store it, you know. So that's how the fungus, if you just have the telescope, let's say, for my side, I put the telescope permanently mounted in my observatory, okay. Um, what I'll do there, actually I put some desiccant, so those uh, dry gel or whatever, put on the, uh, where the eyepiece uh, holder of the telescope or just in front of front lens, then regularly we change the desiccant, then it should work fine. So far, I don't have big problem. Okay, sometimes the fungus will grow a little bit, you can just clean it up, but it will not get seriously uh, affected by the fungus as long as it's uh, not kept in a closet or somewhere dark or whatever. So it's actually quite safe. Uh, in fact, it is more, um, more affected by the fungus if we use the dome type of zootry because the dome type of zootry is not ventilated it's totally close up and it's very hot also you know there's no it's not well ventilated so that's why the roll on roof of the tree is actually very ideal for the use in malaysia okay for the use in malaysia so i hope that answer your question um yeah dr chong anything you want to add that's just going to add on huh? So yeah. basically, CK, we have been doing here covering the optical of observations in Malaysia. But quite a lot of the amateur astronomers in the world are doing infrared also. So they are using the optical telescope, go to a high mountain, less uh, water moisture, they can do infrared astronomy. Right? And the other one is, this is still very new to Malaysia. But if you go to many countries in the world, you also have radio astronomy. There's a growing community of amateur radio astronomers in the world. Australia, Japan, 
and all over the world. So we also want to start. So for example, in, uh, in US time, we started to build our own radio radio telescope in about 15 years ago. And here and there, there are people in. Uh, and the best, of course, our Dr. Zambri Zainal Abidin uh, Physics uh, Department, UC of Malaya, has a 7.3 meter fully, uh, what you call, movable radio telescope in Tanjung Malim. Collaboration, Unicin Malaya and UPSI. Lah. So we hope more radio telescope. So whenever you talk radio telescope, I must present this picture. This is my last picture. CK, eh? mm -hmm. now, now remember now, uh, Thailand is also very uh, active in optical uh, uh, astronomy. And Thailand is also, can you see the picture now, uh, uh, CK? Yeah, now, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So Thailand is, uh, what you call, is very active in optical astronomy. They have the biggest optical telescope in Southeast Asia, which is a 2.4 meter uh, restriction telescope in Chiang Mai. All right. So now I go to a big picture now. Wait a minute. So now, if you have new radio astronomy, now Thailand is about to complete, it's seen by this year, 2021, 40 meter parabolic dish radio telescope somewhere in Chiang Mai. So they, they are also uh, building up there. Uh, what they call long baseline interferometer. So you have a radio telescope in Chiang Mai and other radio telescopes all over Thailand. You can use the whole Thailand as a radio dish. So Thailand, after building up the radio interferometer network, they want to join the East Asia very long baseline interferometer network. So that EABM belongs to China, Japan, and the other country. But Thailand will build their interferometer network. But you see, from Chiang Mai in the north to uh, Nara Timor in the south uh, is 1,500 kilometers. But what about Malaysia? Malaysia in the furthest uh, northwest is Langkawi Island to Lahad Datu, uh, 2,100 kilometers. So if we set our Malaysian radio telescope in Chiang network, our network is more powerful than the Taiwan. So this is for the future. Uh. That's what I want to comment. Uh. Okay, you, then uh, we have uh, one more question before we end. Somebody asking, um, he noticed that most of the trees built in light glow. So how did astronomer handle it? So I believe that what he meant that the, the observatory that we presented, uh, most of them, like for example, uh, William Chi, Nguyen Phong Chi, you know, or whoever, they are right in the KL itself, even Peso itself, right in the middle of Georgetown, Penang. So there's a lot of light pollution. Uh, yes, um, light pollution is a problem, okay? It's a problem um, but you have to understand that um, for the observatory something like for pixel for example they are meant for uh, promoting science you know so um, it's not that we didn't do a lot of research there uh, we still can do research okay we can still do research uh, but then for those observatory like for them pixel we use it for promote uh, science and astronomy to the people so it is okay Sorry, I think my 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 webcam gone, right? <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Never mind, never mind. I I I we are about to finish, so you don't see my face. Don't worry. Sorry. Yeah. Uh anyway, okay. So I continue. Okay. So what happened that for example, um you have the light pollution. Okay, for example, we have a light pollution in KL itself, we have blood pollution. Uh we can still do a lot of other uh other things. Okay, for example, uh if you want to do imaging. Okay, you want to do imaging, you can still do a nice imaging if you use what you call as a narrow band filter. Okay, it is widely used now. It's not a magic uh, magic kind of thing. It's actually very interesting uh, filter um, because what happened is that um, the light pollution in our city used to be coming from the sodium light. So the sodium light actually emit a special kind of wavelength. So if you have a space, if you, if you have a filter that we remove that special light and uh, that, that sodium light, then you will have uh, remove the light pollution itself. Uh, but now, uh, uh, but now um, we have LED light installed. So LED light is a bit troublesome. Okay, it's a little bit troublesome because they emit a broadband brand spectrum of light. But we can still use narrow band imaging. Okay, narrow band imaging. Narrow band imaging means you net you image through a filter that only uh, transmit light in hydrogen alpha, for example, 
uh, you can transmit in sulfur, you can transmit in oxygen wavelength. And this kind of wavelength actually come a lot of the object in the sky actually emit this wavelength, especially the nebula, the planetary nebula, the emission nebula, the reflection nebula. So we can still do some useful research and useful data gathering, even if you are in the light polluted area, okay, by using this filter. So it is uh, a lot of actually amateurs, they live in even worse, worse uh, place like in New York itself, downtown, you know, near there. So they, they are doing quite well, okay. So even with the light pollution, we are still doing well. Anything, okay, Dr. Chang, anything? Okay. 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 Uh, CJ, you made a good point on the narrow band imaging. Just one more thing is, so we have a lot of energy astronomers coming to Penang, coming to Malaysia. We share our experience with them, and they are, they are a Masari from other countries, and they have visited other countries before. So basically, in a sense, in Malaysia, we are still <laughs> in Penang. I, I drive half an hour from Georgetown to Bali Pulau, I can see relatively dark sky. I take half a day, I go Langkawi, I go to the Akeda, I go to the Malaysia Thai border, very dark. So in Malaysia, you see, can get some dark area if you take time to travel. In KL, Plain Valley, Kusa, a lot of light pollution, but no problem. Our amateur astronomers in, in Plain Valley will travel to uh, Pahang, to Johor, or even to Trenganu to observe. So in Malaysia, they can still find quite dark places. There is there are certain places in the world like Japan, Hong Kong, the whole place is a wash up. You can travel for hours, there's also a lot of light pollution. So in that sense, in Malaysia, we are still lucky. CK, what do you think? Huh? In our yeah. future event, we must also mention dark sky awareness. We might bring the awareness of reducing the light pollution in Malaysia. The <laughs> International Dark Sky Association, right? Which our member Emma is trying to promote in, in Sabah. So we want to say, if possible, uh, the, the Malaysian authority will gazette some of the dark area in Malaysia near the Thai border, Tenganu, or maybe somewhere in uh, in Langkawi, a dark sky area for astrology. No lights allowed on the road and so on. Uh. Uh, yeah. So this dark sky awareness, you must create among the, the public. Uh. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. yeah, I agree with that, yes. Yes, sir. So, yeah, I think we, we are about time ready. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we, are, I think we, we now, can talk yeah. now, right? I think that, thank you very much, right, for all the um those people that tune into our program for this week yeah anything you yeah. want to add on dr chong no that's all just reminded to chong sing chong sing don't miss your chance for number 10 <laughs> yeah don't let overtake you number 10 chong sing yes so uh yeah before i forget i would like to thank william chin uh phone uh i think Tong, thanks to dr Roby also for supplying me with the information yeah. Uh, for the this evening presentation, okay. And I would like to thank all the viewer for tuning in. Also, thank you very much for all the question. Um, yeah, I think um, you can. Uh, we have a lot of um. When you're free, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we also have a uh, merchandise now. Uh, that we listed in our Shopee. Okay. Uh, we have. I think we have our still have our calendar. Uh, recently, I think we uh, we come up with a t-shirt, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, very nice t-shirt. I yeah. Already, yeah. We come up with the I Love Astronomy t-shirt. I think we can find it in the Shopee page. Yes. Go search for Astronomy Society of uh, Penang. Yes. Uh, so just go and click, uh, go to our Facebook page to uh, click like or so, and as well as our YouTube page. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything else, Dr. Chong, before I end it? That's Any all last words? <laughs> so, thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. Thank you, CK. Thank you, yeah. Mike. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, good night to everybody. <laughs> okay. Okay.